If you want to play Phasmophobia for real and not just for scares, then this video will help you. My name is Ben and today at MGN I'll be showing you how I play this game. It should be noted that this video is intended for new players, or players who have no idea what they're doing. If you know how to play this game, you might learn some things, but most of the information in here is for new guys. Okay, with that out of the way, let's begin. The first and most important action that you can take when you start up the game is to check your mic. When I launched the game, it did not detect the right microphone, and I wouldn't have realized this had I not checked. I can't stress this enough, playing this game without a mic is not nearly as fun, and if you plan on playing this game alone, not having a mic should be a deal breaker for you. This game absolutely requires a microphone. After the settings, you'll hit play, and after selecting your game type, be introduced to the lobby. On the right, you can see the equipment that I will be bringing in. I notice that there's only one flashlight, when in reality I'll be bringing my friend Brad along with me, so I hit buy and purchase another one. Some equipment is level locked, which just means you'll need to play the game more before they become available to you. As for money, playing the game and completing objectives will get you that. Every objective in this game is optional, you can leave at any time. The more objectives you complete, the more money you get. The more money you get, the more equipment you can buy, and the more equipment you have available to you, the more objectives you will be able to efficiently complete. It is a snowball effect. Once you're satisfied with your equipment, select your mission location and load in. We've arrived. Check the equipment and get set up before investigating. And remember to check the whiteboard for help. This van is your base of operations. Here you will gather your equipment, watch the security cameras, and observe sanity and paranormal activity readings. The first part of the van you should always give your attention to is the whiteboard. The whiteboard contains a list of all the objectives available to you, as well as some advice. The first objective is straightforward, and is always the most important of the list. Find out what type of ghost you are dealing with. The others cannot be completed by us because we were unable to purchase the equipment needed for them. At the end of this video, when you see the amount of money I receive, remember the other objectives that I was unable to complete, and think about how much money I could have made from them. All right, let's look at the advice. The ghost that we are dealing with responds to the name of John Martinez and becomes angered when people speak his name. He also has a tendency to contact those who are alone. Our goal is to gather as much evidence about him as possible and risking our lives is all part of the game. The next step is gathering your equipment. Every piece of equipment that you will bring will be sitting on the shelves. You can only carry three pieces of equipment on you, so the more people you have, the more gear you can carry. There are four large TV screens. The top left illustrates a detailed map of the home. The bottom left shows our sanity. The top right monitors sound equipment, which we currently do not have. And the bottom right records any paranormal activity. It records from left to right. The higher the number, the larger the reaction from the ghost and is a potential sign of its anger. Finally, there is this timer. From the moment we begin this mission, we will have five minutes of grace. Unless we provoke the ghost, it cannot become angry with us for that time, allowing us to freely navigate the home without any hindrance. Now you are ready to begin. Brad and I will use this time to transport all of the equipment from the van to the building. Five minutes is more than enough time to go back and forth a few times, and it is extremely convenient to be able to access everything you need inside the home instead of going outside to the van or asking your friend to come and bring something to you. The secondary objective is to find the fuse box. Not only will you see the ghost turn lights on and off, but it can trip the fuse box, preventing you from turning on the lights at all. If that happens, you will need to go to the fuse box and reset it, and if you are suddenly caught in the dark with no idea where the box is, you will have the unpleasant experience of trying to explore the dark house with an active ghost in order to find it. Finding the box at the start of the game just makes sense. If the map is large or you don't want to physically look around for the box, you can use the map in the van to locate it. It'll appear as a green rectangle. Click on the white switch beside the screen to cycle through the floors until you find it. After we find the fuse box, our third objective will be to find the Ouija board. The board is not guaranteed to spawn every time you play, but if found, it can make determining the identity of the ghost all the easier. The majority of the five minutes that Brad and I spend will be on locating this board. I'll now show you our five minutes. Okay. 
Let's go. What did you want to do in the first five minutes? Um, just trying to remember what house this is exactly. We've obviously done this one before. The board, right? Yeah. Also, another thing I should really stress is that unless you're using push to talk, do not say the name of the whatever. Okay. So we're inside. We're going to turn on the lights. Be careful when you're turning on lights. If you turn on too many lights, you can actually trip the fuse box and then you'll have to go back down. I think it's in the basement. We're going to use this counter. So is there anything? I'm going to put this here and I'm going to keep this. Okay. Nope. It's a pull. We probably have about two minutes left. Mm -hmm. Nice, one's already on. Just looking around. <clears throat> I'll show you guys where the fuse box is. It should be around. There it is this box here if the green light is on obviously the lights will work and the ghost can often turn that off so when the lights turn off and you can't you know just use the switch to turn it back on you'll need to come back down here in this map anyway and click on it so that the light goes green all right brad it's not looking like the board is down here no. okay let's make our way back up so it's going to be upstairs I'm just going to turn the light off Uh, by this point, I would say our time's run out. That's fine. Yeah, we'll just we'll, we'll we'll all we'll both go upstairs, and then after we check upstairs, I will. That's a push. Okay. Nothing in this room. You can interact with drawers and cabinets by holding the click button and, or the left click button, whatever, left mouse button, and dragging. I'm turning lights off as we finish. Of course, of course. It'll be really unfortunate if we don't find the board. Because hmm. then we just have to make it mad. Now, if I'm not talking much, it's actually because it's just some random stuff I say can sometimes trigger the ghost, so... It's actually best to talk less, isn't it? It really is, man. Then this is the bathroom. Something actually I, I should note is we are playing this on amateur difficulty. Uh, I've never, I'm I'm new to the game like everyone else, um, so I've never I don't even know what it's like on the harder difficulties. But uh, if you tend to play this on a harder difficulty and it's a completely different experience, then I mean I think we've already checked that. Okay, well that's upstairs. I think there's like one. Have we oh, been in here at all, really? Where? Over here, where I am. Turn the lights off. Right here. I'm not seeing it. There was definitely cold temperatures. I seen okay. uh, smoke everywhere. Okay. Yeah, I see it. Again. When we're done. Okay, so that's that's that then. Yeah, come here. Right in this area. No, it's flashing lights. So flash that light specifically. So we should put that in our in our journal. Cold temperatures, freezing temperatures. Interesting. Let me let me put that in. Okay. So first evidence we have is uh, freezing temperatures. 
Oh, I got a two on the EMF. What EMF reading is it? Two. Alright, yeah, let's head back. I'm not seeing anything on UV just yet. Okay. Uh... Okay, guys, so that's our initial investigation done. That took longer than five minutes, so the ghost is now fully active, but of course we were fine. We had some light EMF readings, but nothing too crazy. I'll wait for Bradley to come back. Hello. So you're okay with staying in the van, right? Yeah, that's fine. Okay, so what Brad is going to do, so now we're going to separate because Brad is going to stay in the van. And as you can see, actually, if we look at this screen here, you can see the different spikes in activity. So from left to right, so it just went up to one there, as you can see. Brad will keep me informed of the type of activity that's going on, and he'll also keep me informed of my sanity levels. At the same time, I'm going to be setting up the video camera, and he's going to be monitoring what's happening on the screen here. So if, you know, he sees something happen and I'm not in the room, he can tell me. Mm -hmm. So Brad is reporting that he has found freezing temperatures. And that is a clue as to what type of ghost we're dealing with. I'm going to bring this chart onto the screen now. Those are all the different types of ghosts and all the characteristics of those ghosts. And just straight away by freezing, we can determine which ghosts they are not 100%. So currently, from freezing alone, we know that it is either a phantom, banshee, mare, yorai, demon, or wraith. It's one of those. Unfortunately, we were not able to find a board, but I have the book. If it writes on the book, that'll again narrow it down. Uh, Brad was unable to find anything using the UV light. If he had found fingerprints on a windowsill or on something like that, again, it would have narrowed it down. And of course, there's the spirit box. I just call it the radio. I don't know. If it interacts with that, again, that'll narrow it down. So now I'm going to go in by myself and I'm just going to try and communicate. I'll keep an eye. Yeah, sweet. Okay, let's go. The setup phase is done and it is time to properly begin the investigation. Brad is going to stay in the van and keep me updated on my sanity levels the amount of paranormal activity that is happening, and will let me know if he sees anything on my camera. It is also important to note that with this particular ghost, it likes to show itself when people are alone. So for this mission, I will need to be in the house by myself. We were unable to find a board, so I will need the ghost to communicate with me by using the spirit box or the ghost writing book. It interacting with this equipment is far more valuable than it simply turning the lights on and off, because only certain ghosts will use this gear. If I am unable to successfully communicate using this equipment, then I will be forced to make it angry in order to increase its activity and confirm 100% that it cannot use my spirit box or book. You want to set up the camera as well? I, I will. Nice. I can see you entering the house. I'm going to get the camera. As soon as you walk into the house, wait a minute. Up, wait a minute. You okay? You alright? It uh, turned on the sink. Okay, well your activity has gone down to, to zero. Okay, well we've had... That was actually... No, that, that happened while we were outside of the house because I can hear it from the kitchen. Let me know when you've set up the camera. Yeah, I will. We should have got the tripod. Oh, yikes. camera turn it on like that okay let's begin can you confirm the name is john martinez i can indeed all right oh john martinez are that. you there you just said that and it spiked to four john martinez are you there try using spirit box because he's around you right now john martinez can you speak Two flashes of the light. I'm going to take that as a no. You just dropped to zero. Okay. John Martinez, can you move something? John Martinez, what do you... John Martinez, what do you want? 
not getting any activity. No, you're still at baseline of zero. So when you're in this kind of situation, it's it's a bit unfortunate. What I have found is you need to just kind of wait until your sanity goes down or until the ghost gets angry. Again, if we had better equipment or if we had found a board, we would have been able to communicate Apparently, a lot easier. This, the more you use his name, the more you're going to annoy it. Uh, and it will commonly attack if you're alone. Okay. Um, it just, it just, it just, yeah, I just heard that. Okay. John Martinez, can you speak? It dropped to one. Now, the reason why I want the UV light is because I'm going to investigate the hot room. Up until this part in the video, I assumed that the hot room was this living room area here. However, I was constantly hearing knocking sounds and other sounds from the bedroom just beyond the living room and also remembered that the tap did mysteriously turn on in there. Brad did use the UV light to check around the house, but he mainly did this using the windows on the outside of the house. Now what I want to do is go into this presumed hot room and use the UV light to investigate, say, the wardrobes and the walls. Because again, if I can find a fingerprint or a handprint or anything like that, that narrows the list of ghosts down even further. What you're about to see is confirmation that this is in fact the hot room. Okay, I'm going to use the UV light. Did you use the UV light? Oh, you just turned that light on. Let me go back to the thing. This is this is this is a high you activity have, area. You have spiked to five. Yep, yeah, he's in that area. One. He's gone down to one. He seemed to like it when we got together just then. Even though this says he likes to go for you when you're alone. As soon as we met up. Uh, John Martinez, are you here? Can you speak, John Martinez? Can you speak? You just went straight down to zero. Yeah, he can't. He's not. Okay, so spirit box is a no. Spirit box is 100% a no. So again, we can take that off. I'll take the book. This is uh, very clearly uh, an active room of his, so we're going to try the book here. John Martinez, can you write on the book? I'm going to get the UV light back out. This ghost is not very active. You are at base. Okay. Zero. Yep, that's fine. I'm going to... So this area of the house seems to be where it's active. Most of the time when you're playing this game, the ghost will stay in a specific room or area. Not stay necessarily, but it will be the most active. Oh, that's the breaker. Weird okay. Oh, you're just up to one. Yeah, he opened a door as well. Yeah. Okay. One. Well, he didn't like me investigating that room. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. That's fine. Zero. Because we investigated, of of course we know this map, but if this is your first time on a map. This is one of the benefits of starting off um, using your five minutes to investigate and everything like that. I knew immediately where to go. No need to get, you know, worried or anything like that. Everything's fine. Because Brad is telling me what the activity is, I know the likelihood of it being angry. So because he's giving me low numbers, even if it trips the breaker or something like that, it's fine. I know not to be too upset. Your sanity is at 66%. Which is higher than it should be at this time. Yeah. All right, we're gonna try this again. Actually, you know what? We're gonna turn this on. I think that's his- You just oh, spiked, oh, oh, you just oh, spiked oh, oh. it to six. Yep, yeah, that's the room. 100%, that's the room. 100%. 100%. Hundred percent. You are at six still. Okay. So I don't want to make Seven. it too angry. Yeah, stay by the door. Just in case it you decides to attack. One. Okay. That's fine. Okay, that's fine. Oh, I found another key. 
You're still at three. Fine. So he's around you. Two. Mm -hmm. That's fine. Just turn back the lights. Ah, uh, you're at zero I'm going again. To... He, it's in there. So I'm going to take the book. So we now understand a hundred, yeah, hundred percent. What's the numbers? Uh, you're at zero. Okay. It's a hundred percent in here. Oh no, don't worry. Hundred percent. Hundred percent in here. So I'm gonna put the book, if it'll... Thank you. What's my sanity at? Your sanity is still at 66%. I'm gonna take the camera as well, actually. Yeah, can you move me? Okay. I can see both doors. And yet. then I'm gonna get the spirit box, and then we are going to try this still again. still at a flat line of zero, by the way. Your sanity is at 63%. Mm hmm. Okay, right, here we go. John Martinez, are you here? Oh, I forgot the EMF reader. John Martinez, is this your room? Such low count of... Zero. Oh, that's the breaker. Did the breaker again. I okay. have my vision on. John Martinez, what do you want? That's the light. You want the light off. Okay. You can have the light off. That's fine. That's allowed. Okay. John Martinez, is this your room? Was Was this your room? Still nothing. John Martinez, how did you die? Oh, oh. John Martinez, are you in this room? John Martinez, are you here? What the frickety frickety? Hmm. Hello, hello, John, John. Bradley, hello. this isn't working. I've never had a ghost this shy before. It should be noted that this is not normal. Out of all the missions I have played in this game, this is by far the most shy ghost I have ever encountered. I don't know what it is exactly about this ghost or what it was exactly about it, but for the longest time I had high sanity levels and there was very little interaction with this ghost. Again, we were able to pinpoint that one bedroom to be the hot room, but even there, the there wasn't much happening except for lights turning on and off. It know. is very unfortunate but because we do not have the board, and we do not have a wide range of equipment, this is ideally, I guess you could say, the new player experience. It's a hunt. Yeah, it's a hunt. When you're in this situation, the only thing you can really do is just keep trying until either it attacks you, or it reveals something. There is literally nothing else you can do. This video actually was fairly long, and I've had to cut down quite a bit, so you're seeing a much shorter version of what happened. But there has been plenty of times in this video where I'm just standing there or walking around asking questions and nothing happens. This is not the the average experience that you will have with the ghosts in this game. I just want to make that clear. So when the ghost decides to attack, it begins something called a hunt. It'll lock the front door, which means you all, your only chance is to outrun it. That's the breaker, boys. Which means your only chance is to hide or outrun it. You gotta pull it. Pull it. Thank you. I think it's starting to get angry now, so we're gonna see a lot more activity. John Martinez, are you here? No, this thing is useless. Uh-oh, it's a hunt. 
Our investigation has now concluded with the ghost initiating a hunt. When the ghost gets angry, or it's a very malicious type of ghost, it'll attack using an event called a hunt. So you will know this if you're in the van by the activity reading as a 10. You will know if it's a hunt in the building if the front door is locked. The front door will be locked in every single hunt. You will be stuck there with the ghost. Now the likelihood of you dying during a hunt is very high because you have very little time to act. Your light will be flashing, you'll be in the pitch black, and you won't really know what to do unless you're experienced. So if you are in a hunt, you have two options, run or hide. For the most part, you can get away with running as long as you're running in the right direction. The only ghost where running will not work for you is the Revenant, because when you're out in the open, the Revenant will move much faster than the other ghosts. Of course, that being said, if you don't know what type of ghost it is, that's not really going to help you, so you're probably going to run anyway. The other option is to hide. You can hide simply by going into a room and closing the door, or going into any of those cabinets that I've shown you in this video and hiding in them. The ghost. Even if it knows that you're in a cabinet, I have yet to see a ghost open up your hiding spot and take you out of it. So, unfortunately for me, I took a chance and I ran, and I ran the wrong direction, and you will see what happens when you meet a ghost. I can't see anything. You're at 10. You're still at 10. <gasps> oh, I'm dead. Uh, oh, you just smashed something as well. Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm dead. Okay. Right. That's right, so Brad, now it's on you. Are you insane? <laughs> Hell no. You gotta do it for the content. Do it for the content? Yeah, we had a spike up to 10 there. 10 is usually when the attack happens. I reckon you should call it there. Oh, it's flashing lights. Did you see that? Orb. I just seen an orb. Yep. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah. Did you see that on the CCTV? Yeah, I did. There's another orb. Put that in your journal. S Ghost orb. So I'll hit J. And we've got freezing temperatures. Ghost orb. So it's between a phantom, mare, and Yorai. It's not a mare. No, I reckon it's a, uh... It's, it didn't trigger the EMF5 at all, and it didn't do the spirit box at all, and it didn't do writing so at all. it's not a phantom. It's not a mare. Um... It's not, it didn't it's do not writing. Right. It didn't do spirit box. It did an orb though. I'm seeing orbs everywhere. It's definitely in that room. It must be a phantom then. Yeah, there's another orb. It's a phantom. Mare. Oh no. Oh, got, I got thirty dollars for it. True. I got thirty dollars as well. Not bad. fair enough. No. So unfortunately, my friends, we were unsuccessful in figuring out what type of ghost it was. It was pretty close. We got fairly close to figuring out exactly what type it was. I personally did not believe it was a mare, simply because it only tripped the fuse box, I believe, a total of around two times. And in the past, when we've experienced, you know, mare activity, it's been a lot more than that. This ghost especially was extremely shy, very passive, and I felt really felt like we had to force its hand. In making it aggressive. If we had been able to find the board, we would have been able to communicate with it, ask it questions about how old it was, how long it had been dead, stuff like that, you know, and we would have been able to get information through that. Yep. Although we were successful, I do hope that this video um, provided at least entertainment to you guys, and maybe you learned I think something it was informative. new. It clearly maybe shows, it I think it shows was informative. When and how you would use equipment. So, yeah. If you guys like this kind of video, just say in the comments that you do, and we will make more of it. My name is Ben, this is Brad, and yeah, it was fun showing you guys phasmophobia. Take, Take care. care.